And my next guest of this afternoon helped to bring rock and roll to the Maritimes. He played it for us on the radio and later hosted a dance show on television. It was called Frank's Bandstand. Joining me on the phone this afternoon to talk about his new book. It's called I Owe It All to Rock and Roll and the CBC. Is Maritime Broadcasting Legend Frank Cameron. Frank, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Rick Howe. How are you? I are well. How are you, sir? Well, not bad at all, my friend. Good stuff. If you're all you're all dug out, you got rid of all the snow that <laughs> fell into your yard uh, overnight. <laughs> <laughs> I was just, uh, I live in Dartmouth, near uh, Dartmouth High School, and all the little boys and girls uh, park their daddy and mummy's BMWs on my street, <laughs> and I, I just, you know, I, I, I'm just checking on them to make sure that they're not blocking traffic. Yeah, but other than that, you know, it's a good time. It is a day. You yep. started in CKEC, New Glasgow. What year was that? 1955. You were just actually. a you were just a teenager at the time, were you not? Well, I was. Uh, before that, my friend Sandy Hoyt and I did a show when we were in high school. Okay. For CKEC, and we we told all kinds of lies about the schools in Pictou County and stuff like that. <laughs> And uh, we played like Tony Bennett and the Four Aces and things like that. But um, then in '55, I was offered the uh, full-time job. And you—that's when you began playing rock and roll. But I was watching you with uh, Steve Murphy last night. You told a great story about the—I believe it was the uh, the station manager's wife who one day decided she didn't like that that kind oh, of music. Yeah, that was in Truro. Oh, okay. Yell. Um, and uh, I was there from 56 to 59, and uh, we were playing rock and roll. As a matter of fact, the Toro station at that time was way ahead of the Halifax stations because they had gone to block programming, and uh, we were having a great time, and the kids loved it. But the hammer came down. I think it's the last year I was there. It was probably 59. The hammer came down because uh, the owner's wife uh, was playing cards, and uh, her card uh, buddies <laughs> decided that they didn't like that awful rock and roll. So <laughs> it went out, and in came Guy Lombardo. So, I mean, <laughs> it was, uh, well, at least it was Canadian content. But anyway, <laughs> uh, it was um, it, it was kind of... Uh, Almost a death knell for the Toro station, but then they recovered and and uh, things were fine. And I went to Halifax. I came to Halifax in '59 and went to CHNS, and, the, yes. they were, and that's when they decided to go all rock and roll. They did. That's funny uh, because when I came to CHNS, they were. I did a show called Life Begins at 9:60, uh, which was the morning show. Yeah, very clever, and. Um, I had to fight to get rid of the morning march, but uh, we finally did that. <laughs> and uh, Bill Fulton at CJCH was killing us uh, because Bill's a very funny, very glib guy. And um, he was killing us. So um, Fred Ehrenberg, who was a program director at the time, did a trip. Uh, he went to California. He went to uh, Chicago, and I think he went to Toronto to get to find out what radio stations were playing. And Top Forty was the the key. So we went Top Forty in 1961. Halifax didn't know what hit it, and uh, got a lot of complaints. But yet, oh, here again, the young people just loved it and, and stuck with us. And by a couple of years down the road, it was number one in the market. At the oh time. God, yeah. We had at one time, this is, uh, I'm not making this up, Rick, we had one time 65% of the available Halifax radio audience. Now, wow. they didn't have the number of stations that they have today, yeah. obviously, but... But that was just, what, three stations back in those days? There uh, were three stations. CHNS, uh, CJCH, and CFDR. <laughs> yeah, the audience. And... Um, and they had the top 60 at, at 960, they called it. And uh, we did a trip to Toronto to see the Beatles, um, which I said would never make it. But, uh, however, I, I have to, I, I've been eating those words uh, for all these years, actually. <laughs> and that led to, uh, again, what the, some, some classic radio wars in the city between, at uh, the time, the two top stations, which would have been NS and CJCH. That's right. And... Uh, CJ uh, threw everything they had at us. They even went country for a while oh, wow. uh, with Jerry Parsons, the late Jerry Parsons, uh, and uh, uh, that didn't quite work. And then finally, Chum bought them, and uh, they began to come back up in the ratings. I was long gone then. I went to uh, CBC. Over the CBC by then, yeah. uh, just at the end of it, when Chum uh, bought them. They had a guy named Charles Rodney Chander. I, I, used to, I used to listen to him in Montreal. Exactly. Yeah, at and He was a very funny guy. Yeah. He, was, he, he had very glib, very uh, good uh, patter. 
and uh, they started to come back at that time. So. Charles, Charles P. Rodney Chandler, that was his name. Yeah, Charles P. Rodney Chandler, that was it. Indeed. Yeah. Now, when did you get involved in, in television in Frank's bandstand? Well, I went to uh, the CBC, well, let's put it this way, from 64 to 67, I was uh, known as a contract performer. I was still working at CHNS. I was known as a contract performer uh, at CBC, and I did Frank's Bandstand, which was part of a national series called Music Hop. Okay. And it, uh, we had from Halifax, Montreal, uh, Winnipeg, um, what am I missing here? Oh, Toronto. Yeah, oh, God, we can't forget <laughs> Toronto. No. Uh, Toronto and Vancouver. And... Um, uh, it was great fun. It was uh, it was an amazing time, and we kind of eh, sort of uh, based it on uh, Dick Clark on, on Dick Clark American Bandstand without the yeah, but we had live performers. Uh, Dicks were all lip sync, and uh, we, we had live performers on the air, and uh, we had uh, guests, special guests, and we had dancers from um, the Halifax area schools. Oh yeah, and uh, we couldn't we couldn't pay them. Obviously, there was some kind of rule that said you couldn't pay them. So we gave them uh, bling. You know, we gave them I don't know a CD or no, they didn't have CDs. Uh, no, Forty fives or LPs, forty fives, T-shirts, and all that or kind of thing. Yeah. So we kind of paid them in that in mm. in uh, uh, in merchandise. But you were you were hot stuff at that time, I and mean, you were you were the the king of rock and roll in those days. Well. Well, I don't know whether I'd go that far, but uh, I think Elvis was the king of rock and well, roll. Well, here, here in our market, though, I mean, everybody, you yeah. know, nobody missed Frank's bandstand. Yeah, it was uh, it was great uh, fun, and we used to get uh, letters from all across the country saying, you know, boy, uh, um, we because Halifax was not known then for uh, its uh, music, although it was really because we had Don Messer's Jubilee for God's sake, and we had Sing Along Jubilee. <laughs> <laughs> and so local musicians uh, came to the fore, and many of them went on to, God, uh, Brian Ahern, who was the band leader on Frank's Bandstand, he married Emmy Lou Harris. Oh, God's really? Band. Yeah, wow. Yeah. And uh, he uh, has since divorced, obviously, but showbiz marriages don't last very long. Anyway, and uh, <laughs> yours is doing all right. But anyway, uh, anyway, he... he, uh, he uh, had um, uh, a uh, the, the producer, I mean, a producer, Manny Pitson, a great guy, absolutely. Halifax guy, member of the Greek community in Halifax. Uh, his parents uh, uh, immigrated here, God, I don't know, in the 20s or something. Yeah. And um, he... Uh, uh, was just he was he was a master of television. I I say that Manny Pitson did the first music videos because what we used to do is take the cameras outside the studio to Point Pleasant Park. Uh, I still remember um, uh, Trish McKinnon singing uh, a song beside one of the cannons in that they used to have in Point Pleasant Park, and. Um, it was it was just great, and uh, we had some, well, mildly funny stuff too. Um, <laughs> Good times. I, I would dress in a. Uh, I looked like a really very bad Bella Lugosi, but uh, uh, with a knife sticking out of my back, and I was the <laughs> keeper of the groove yard. Okay. <laughs> which means that we did an oldie. <laughs> yes, even then they had oldie, <laughs> but um, and and. Uh, Karen uh, Oxley, God love her. I loved her to pieces. Uh, she's no longer with us. Trish McKinnon is no longer with us. J.V. Wells, who sang uh, vocals, is no longer with us. Um, and uh, it's just, uh, I think, Anne Murray and I and the technical crew are the only ones kind of left. You wow. know what I mean? Well, well I, Brian Ahern is still, but he's in California. Some great names in the book. Uh, you know, the likes of uh, Rube Hornstein, for example, oh. uh, Jim Nunn, uh, Colleen Jones, and Norma Lee McLeod. I mean, they've uh, worked with some pretty good people over the years. Well, well and, and, you, and Doug Saunders. I should have and, to mention Doug. And Doug, Dougie Saunders, who's now in uh, Glace Bay. Yep. And I don't know whether people know this, but Doug suffered a stroke uh, last year. Oh, I, I did not know that. He's no. almost recovered now. He's, he's getting pretty. He's back on the air, but uh, he's almost recovered, and I haven't seen him. And I say in the book, of course, that we kind of uh, 
parted ways um, after we left CHNS, or after he left CHNS, yeah. and he uh, and so. But I got to get back together with him. And if you're listening to this show right now, Doug, <laughs> call me. Anyway, but um, but Doug. Um, Doug and I had just uh, an amazing time doing uh, what was it called the Maritimes tonight. Yeah, it was it, yeah. it was it was yeah. a newscast extraordinaire. The book is very well is uh, well. It's called I Owe It All to Rock and Roll in the CBC, a memoir by uh, Frank Cameron with a foreword by Bobby Cortola as well. A good friend of yours too, Bobby. Yeah, Cortola. absolutely. I've known Bobby since 1960. Well, <laughs> we're, we're both really old now. <laughs> <laughs> Frank, good to talk to you again, and a great book. And I advise, uh, recommend it to anyone who wants to. Read about the good old days in Halifax television and radio. Thank you, my friend, and uh, always a pleasure to talk to you, Rick. Thank you, Frank. Have a great day, sir. Oh, okay, my friend. Take care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Frank Cameron.